It was dark inside the lodge. The water hit the hot rocks with a loud crack. Steam floated up over the men and me while he prayed softly in his language. A pinprick of white light appeared, expanded until all I could see was light. Later, he shared with me that as a child, he had sacred experiences like the one in the lodge, but also trauma. By the time he had grown into a man, the wounds he had inside had turned into hurt and then later into anger. And then the anger turned into violence, first towards himself and then later towards others. But when that happened, they went and found him and locked him up in the prison where we had met that day sitting in the lodge to make prayer. I have often wondered what was so different about him. Why do some individuals who have several sacred and traumatic experiences in childhood later become a Ketathis, or what some people call an elder? This is the story of a research journey that asks the question, how does a Ketathis come to know traditional, empirical, or sacred knowledge while they develop wisdom and insight? Metakuyapi, Pahamp Tesawi Mieye. My relatives, this is me, Grace Wan Buffalo Woman. I am Metin Nihial with family roots that reach back to Willow Bunch, Saskatchewan, and the Red River settlements. My dad, Tapwe Kretchen, taught me that I have an obligation to represent my community and share whatever gifts or knowledge that I have. That's why I created this video to share with you what I learned. To design a research project, I made prayer, had ceremony, and I borrowed from the everyday practices that flow from my life as a Métis Nihia woman who shares life with a Dakota husband and Sundance chief. To do that, I needed to devise my own way of doing research. First, I contacted four individuals, each identified as a Kateatis by their communities, men and women who I wanted to learn from. I offered them tobacco and when they agreed, we set a time to get together. Over tea in Bannock, at the kitchen table or sitting in a sunny room in our home, they shared their stories and knowledge with me. One chose to share over Zoom because of health concerns at the time. Afterwards, to thank them, I sent them home with freshly made jam, apple pie, and other gifts. Who are they? Niju Gabo, two standing man, Anishinaabe. Nika Nishkam Eskesh Ishkweo, leading earth woman, Cree. Wanbari Wakita, looking eagle, Dakota. Shunkira Wachi, dancing fox, Blackfoot, Lakota, and settler ancestors. To learn from their stories, I borrowed a practice from the Vision Quest ceremony, where I spend four days in solitude in a cabin at the edge of the lake. There, I walked in the fallen leaves while I listened to their recorded voices and stories in my earbuds, prayed, left offerings for my ancestors, and then spent the rest of the time designing and creating a ribbon skirt. I utilized the creative process to quiet my mind, to activate my heart and to keep my hands busy while I opened myself to the sacred guidance within their words. This is what I learned. First, I chose two different fabrics for the skirt to represent the two paths that prepared them for the role of Kateatis. The first path was a strong childhood foundation filled with love, security, and learning that they have the power to change their circumstances. The second path came upon traumatic events that required courage and hard work to heal. The colorful ribbons represent sacred guidance that lies underneath all of their life experiences and promotes healing while teaching them how to help others. The eye catching 
design elements of Métis florals and Dakota geometrics are those important events that gave them a belief that they can rely on Creator, their ancestors, and the guidance they receive in their visions and dreams. This belief is a direct result of evidence rather than simply relying on faith alone. They accept that Creator has given them a responsibility to help the people, to be a Kataeitis. It's not a duty that they can easily refuse. When they receive sacred guidance, and this is really important, they take action to follow it, even when they prefer to do something else, or if someone tells them to do something differently. Early in their journeys, family and community members seem to see their potential and are often instrumental in subtle ways to ensure that they find their way to the path, the path of being a Kataeitis. For example, a woman at the Sundance brings her into the Sundance circle by asking her to help cook or to come to the Sundance tree. And this step eventually leads to her role as a Kataeitis. Or for him, a mentor says, they want you over there. Hop in and you can ride with me. Then when he arrives to the Sundance ceremony, he receives a powerful vision that catapults him onto the sacred road. Later, after they've journeyed on their own road for a time, they evolve to follow their dreams and visions over what other people tell them. I also learned that they come to know through their relationship with the land that teaches and heals them. In ceremony where they get lots of practice making prayers, watching for the answers, and then taking the action once the answer comes through their deep love for the community, which is demonstrated by their lifelong willingness to sacrifice for the people, often at great personal cost. The ribbon skirt is complete now. The thousands of stitches that it took to make it are like the thousands of steps each Kataeitis took in their journey of coming to know. At this stage, we could easily forget all the hard work and challenge that had to be overcome to make it this far. Yet, we recognize that the ending is really just the beginning of the life that waits ahead. <laughs>